Okay, prior to tonight's meeting, we're going to have a, uh, we've got a student-led reflection, um, and that reflection is going to be offered by Raheem Coleman, a sixth grade student at R.K. Smith. Uh, following the reflection, Mr. Jay Robichaud will lead us in the pledge. So if y'all stand. Heavenly Father, we ask that you guide our board members tonight with your supreme wisdom as they make sound decisions that will affect the future of all children, regardless of race, social status, or gender. Guide their hearts and minds in the spirit of fairness so that they can make purposeful decisions on behalf of the students, parents, and employees of the St. Charles Parish Public School System. I ask that you bless everyone that is in attendance tonight, and thank you for being our constant source of guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Rahim, I want to thank you for those words, and I uh, wish you the best of luck the rest of this year and, and your time at uh, R.K. Smith. Thank you so much. I'd like to call the St. Charles Parish Board meeting March 20th, 2019 to order. Madam Secretary, please note for the record that all board members are in attendance, along with our superintendent, Ms. Felicia Gomez-Walker, as well as our executive secretary for the board and superintendent, Ms. Shelley Babineau. Okay, first item on the agenda is 2.01, resolution in memory of Ms. Candace Tate Roussel. Mr. Suffern, would you read that for me, please? Mr. President, it, it would be my honor. Uh, Ms. Uh, Roussel was a dear friend. Uh, she was a beautiful soul, both inside and out. Resolution in memory of Ms. Candace Tate Roussel. Whereas Ms. Candace Tate Roussel served as a teacher for 28 and a half years in the St. Charles Parish Public School System, and be it resolved that the St. Charles Parish School Board herein expresses to the family of the late Candace Tate Roussel its sincere sympathy in this, their time of sorrow, and be it further resolved that a page in the March 20th, 2019 minute book be set aside for the sole purpose of inscribing thereon this resolution and that a copy of this resolution be presented to Ms. Roussel's family. And I move for approval of this resolution. Second. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Suffern, second by Mr. Robichaud. All those in favor? Uh, All right. Aye. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to cast a vote. We're going to see if it works. Yeah, that motion passes unanimously. I'll ask Mr. Suffern and our superintendent, they'll present that uh, resolution. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is 2.02, 2019 United Way of St. Charles Bridge Run Proclamation. And I would ask Mr. Alexander if he would read that, please. Uh, go ahead, too, Mr. President. Whereas United Way of St. Charles is the leader in partnering assets and resources to pro provide a program of health and human services for St. Charles Parish, and whereas in 1997 the first United Way Bridge Run was held as a fun community and family event to raise funds and to create a greater awareness for the for United Way programs 
And whereas in its 23rd year, the United Way Bridge Run event draws on average more than 2,000 participants. And whereas the St. Charles Parish Public School System is eager and excited to participate on race day, Saturday, April 6th, and whereas we encourage our employees along with their family and friends to join St. Charles Parish Public School School's team to raise dollars in an effort to assist in providing resources and services to the resident, residents of St. Charles Parish. Therefore, be it resolved that the St. Charles Parish School Board does hereby join together with United Way of St. Charles and the St. Charles Parish community in promoting the 2019 United Way of St. Charles 5K Bridge Run. And I motion uh, move to approve this proclamation. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Alexander, second by Mr. Bernard. Is there any discussion? Superintendent. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the strong partnership and the long-lasting partnership that we have uh, had with United Way for many years. And in fact, the employees of the St. Charles Parish Public School System um, recently presented United Way um, with a check of over $90,000. Um, but it is a reciprocal relationship because we also, the school system does benefit greatly from our association with United Way. Tonight we have Tamara Platzmeyer who is here to say a few words on behalf of United Way. Ms. Platzmeyer. Thank you so much and thank you for allowing me to be here tonight. Thank you for your continued support and partnership to the United Way and the Bridge Run event. Um, I can't say how grateful we are to have you guys. I would also like to thank our presenting sponsor of the Bridge Run, which is Shell Norco, and our co-presenting sponsor, which is Valero. Um, and we just encourage everybody to come out. It's a great family event. Um, it's the largest uh, road race across the Mississippi River with over 2,000 participants. Um, Saturday, April the 6th, you can register at our website, um, and then we'll have a great after party afterwards with live music and food provided by Cornerstone. So it's a, it's a great day. Uh, pray for good weather, and thanks again for allowing us to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Blackmark. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Madam Secretary, that item passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is 2.03, School Library Month Proclamation. I'd ask Mr. Sapwell if he would read that, please. Thank you, Mr. President, my pleasure. <coughs> whereas, April, okay, I'm sorry. whereas April 2019 has been designated as the 34th Annual National School Library Month, and whereas school libraries provide materials for teachers, and students that encourage growth and knowledge. And whereas school libraries provide materials that will develop library culture, aesthetic appreciation, and ethical standards. And whereas school libraries provide materials which reflect the ideas and beliefs of religion, of religious, social, political, historical and ethnic groups and their contributions to the American and world heritage and culture. And whereas school libraries provide books to encourage children to read for their pleasure, and whereas school libraries provide materials to meet individual needs, varied interests, abilities, socioeconomic backgrounds, and maturity levels of the students served. And whereas school libraries are a fun place for students to go, and all students deserve a well-managed library to provide for free expression and access to ideas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the St. Charles Parish School Board, hereby proclaim the month of April 2019 as School Library Month and call upon school administrators, teachers, students, and community members of, the St. Charles, of St. Charles Parish to recognize and support the contributions of school libraries. And I move for its adoption. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Savoy, second by Mr. Robichaud. Is there any discussion? Superintendent. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Correct that. Mr. Smith made that second. I'm getting younger. I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm just getting younger. You're throwing your voice on it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nockham. Earlier, uh, both Mr. Nockham and I acknowledged the fact that libraries, school libraries, have changed significantly over the years. Um, they provide tremendous services and resources and really are the hubs of our schools. Um, tonight, I'm going to ask the Supervisor of Curriculum and Instruction, Mr. Matt Spitz, to introduce us, say a few words, and introduce us to the librarians and library assistants that are here tonight. Thank you, Mrs. Smith Spitz. Thank you, Superintendent Gomez Walker and school board members for proclaiming April as, school, as National School Library Month. The 2019 School Library Month theme is Everyone Belongs in Your School Library. Our school media specialists and their library assistants work hard every day to provide a variety of resources so that our students and teachers know that they truly belong in our school libraries. This evening, I'm proud to introduce the following library media specialist. I'm going to ask that they come forward and remain at the front while we announce everyone. Um, starting with our elementary schools, from Ethel Scheffner Elementary, Ms. Allison Feeney. From New Sarpy Elementary, Ms. Pat Bailey. From Luling Elementary, Ms. Stephanie Lane. From Lakewood Elementary, Ms. Kathleen Ganan and Ms. Callie Walsdorf. We also have two representatives from Mimosa Park Elementary, Ms. Lacey Doucet and Ms. Jan Myers. From RJVL Elementary, Ms. Yvette John. From St. Rose, we have Ms. Lynette Benedict. From our middle schools, we have Ms. Judith Jobert from Albert Cammon Middle. From Harry Hurst, we have Ms. Margaret Granier. From R.K. Smith Middle, we have Ms. Stephanie Meir. <laughs> Representing our high schools, from Destrehan High, Ms. Jennifer Casanova and Ms. Maria Quantino. <laughs> from Hornville High School, Ms. Holly Johnson and Ms. Belinda Subcheck. Thank you, Mr. Smith, Spitz, and thank you to our librarian slash media specialist for everything that they do for our students. Okay, hearing no other discussion, please cast your vote. <laughs> Madam Secretary, that motion passes. Okay, next item on the agenda is school board and superintendent recognition. We've got a few recognitions tonight, and uh, after the recognitions, we'll take a short break, about a two-minute break, to allow those that wish to leave the, the uh, room can do so, um, but you're certainly welcome to stay for the business portion of tonight's meeting. Students, 
Destrehan High School student wrote a children's book which will be published and sold nationally. Zachariah Johnson. J.B. Martin Middle School student was elected as the 2019 Louisiana Junior Beta State Vice President, Reagan Miller. Hornville High School student is the Louisiana State wrestling runner-up, Alan Meir. Hornville High School students received an overall superior rating for their duet musical selection at the Louisiana State Thespian Conference and qualified to participate in the International Thespian Festival this summer. Harley Dahl and Jocelyn Gann. Teams, Ethel Schaffner Elementary School teams placed at the State Destination Imagination Competition. In second place, the Orn Target Technical Challenge Team, Manager Dana Dejean and team members. First place, Game On Fine Arts Challenge Team, Manager Allison Feeney and team members. And also placing first, the Medical Mystery Scientific Challenge Team with Manager Debbie LaGrange.
the J.B. Martin Middle School Junior Beta Club placed at the 2019 State Convention. Third place, group talent, Coach Annette Blanchard. First place for group skit and coaches that are in attendance. Coach Brandon Robinson and Annette Blanchard. receiving first place for the technology group, Coach Brandon Robinson. <laughs> Destrehan High School Boys Soccer Team is district champion. Coach Scott Rigby and players that are in attendance. Destrehan High School girls soccer team is district champion. Coaches Mert Dager, Marcella Savadera, and team members that are in attendance. Honville High School girls basketball team is the district co-champion. Coach Ariana Smith-Martin and team members that are in attendance.
Hornville High School wrestling team is the district champion, Coach Dan Irwin. Again, I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate all the recipients tonight, and thank you for what you do in leading our district. And I just encourage you to continue doing what you're doing and 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 uh, make us proud, as you always do. So this time we'll take about a two-minute break. You're very welcome to stay for the business portion of tonight's meeting, but if you care to leave, you're welcome to do so. I'd like to call the board meeting for um, March 20th back to order. We'll begin the business portion of tonight's meeting. First item on the agenda is 4.01 minutes. Minutes for February 8th, uh, approve the minutes for February 18th, 2019 committee meeting and February 20th, 2019 regular board meeting. Move approval. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Robichaud, second by Mr. O'Quinn. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing no discussion, please cast your vote. Madam Secretary, please note for the record that that motion passes unanimously. Okay, next item on the agenda is 4.02, superintendent selection. The board members conducted a national search for the next superintendent of St. Charles Parish Public Schools. The board reviewed 22 applications and interviewed eight candidates. Four finalists were named to continue through the process. The four finalists participated in a community forum, toured schools, and presented to the board as part of the final interview. Tonight, the board will, view, will vote to make the final selection for superintendent of St. Charles Parish Public Schools. Each board member will vote by signed ballot, which will be read aloud by the board president. A candidate must receive five votes to be successful in the selection. So, Madam Secretary, if you'll uh, hand out the ballots, please. Once your ballots are completed, board members, if you'll fold them over and, and send them to the center, please. I'll ask our secretary to tally the votes as I read them. Smith has cast his vote for Dr. Ken Ortling. Ward Member Oakwin has cast his vote for Dr. Ken Ortling. Ward Member Robichaud has cast his vote for Dr. Ken Ortling. Ward Member Savoy has cast his vote for Dr. Ken Ortling. Board Member Bernard has cast our vote for Dr. Ken Ortling. Board Member Alexander has cast his vote for Dr. M Maria Petrie Martin. Board Member Suffren has cast his vote for Dr. Ken Ortling. Board Member Nakan has cast his vote for Dr. Ken Ortling. Okay. Madam Secretary, am I, am I correct in that vote being 7-1? 
Okay. At this time, I'll entertain a motion um, to um, to recognize Dr. Ken Arling as our um, next superintendent of St. Charles Parish Public Schools. So moved. Second. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Uh, Suffren, second by Mrs. Bernard. Um, is there any discussion? Uh, just one thing, uh, Mrs. I can. I think the motion should probably say uh, that subject to uh, approval of a government contract. Yeah, yeah that, that's correct. This this uh, this selection is subject to a successful contract between uh, um, the selectee and the board. Okay. Um, any discussion before we vote? I'd like to take an opportunity, though, right now to acknowledge uh, one of our own board members, and that's uh, Mr. John Smith. Mr. Smith served as a coordinator for the Search and Selection Committee, um, and he did so in, in a very professional manner. Um, our goal was to, was to conduct this search and selection in a transparent manner, and I think that was very successful. Uh, Mr. Smith, I appreciate the, um, the effort that you put forward. I appreciate the um, keeping the board informed all along the way on this process, and um, thank you, sir, for your efforts. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much, President Nakin, uh, and thanks to the St. Charles Parish community, and particularly to those community members who served on the uh, task force that the board put together. The input that uh, you provided the board uh, helped the board to arrive at a conclusion regarding this process. Uh, the input that we received from the St. Charles Parish community in general was very valuable in helping us to develop the profile of the superintendent for the, who will begin in 2019. Uh, I'd like to also recognize and thank uh, the members of uh, my team who worked with me tirelessly throughout this process uh, uh, and ask them to stand if they will. Ms. Stevie Cravetta, who is the uh, Public Relations Director. Ms. Cravetta, would you stand, please? Um, <laughs> Mr. Eric Truding in Human Resources. Eric, would you stand? <laughs> Ms. Stephanie Steib in uh, our Technology Department. <laughs> And our board secretary, Ms. Uh, Shelley Babineau. Shelley. <laughs> Are there any uh, members of the Community Advisory Committee uh, present with us tonight? We did extend an invitation to them to uh, come to the meeting tonight. So if you're here, please stand. And Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Okay, is there any other discussion? I, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, that was uh, Mr. Suffren made the motion, and Ms. Bernard made the second. Yeah. And what is the motion? The motion is to accept the vote as presented. Yes. Okay. There's no further discussion. Please cast your vote. And okay, that motion passes. Again, pending successful negotiation of the contract between the board and our potential new superintendent, Dr. Ken Hartling. Congratulations. Dr. Hartling, I see you're in the audience. Dr. Arling, would you like to say a few words? Sure. 
Get used to it. Wow. Um, first of all, I really want to start by, by saying thank you to the board um, for your very thoughtful leadership in the selection process. I know it was very arduous, but I know you put a lot of, uh, of thought in the selection, and I sincerely appreciate the selection process and your leadership during it. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank our community, uh, school system, employees who also participated, as well as our, stu as our students. I know there were a few of them here tonight. I saw them leave, but they certainly wished us well. But uh, for all of them that really took part in this collaborative process to help select the next superintendent. I am truly, me and my family are truly blessed to call St. Charles Parish our home for the past 18 years. This parish and its unique bond with its school system is second to none in this state. Uh, when, I, when we first moved here 18 years ago, I recognized that right off the bat. In fact, the current superintendent and I had words probably my first year as a teacher. But we decided to move here and make this place our home. Because St. Charles Parish provides the opportunities for a family, for a community, and for a close working relationship with his school system. St. Charles Parish Public School System is the crown jewel of Louisiana. And I say that not just because of the close working relationship that we have with our community and our community has with the school system, but the partnerships that we have long established and the relationships with business and industry, with our local law enforcement agency, with the judicial system, and our local government. You cannot replicate that anywhere in this state. And our success is partially attributed to our relationships with them. Our school system has been on solid ground for many years, mainly due to your direction as a board, our superintendent's leadership, and most importantly, our dedicated school system employees that literally breathe the life, the skills, the knowledge, the hopes, the dreams, and ambitions into our students' lives each and every day. They truly are the saving grace of our school system, and they make our students number one top priority. I very humbly and very appreciatively accept this tremendous responsibility that you've given me to collaboratively lead our school system into the future, knowing that we will have many challenges, but we'll strongly accept those challenges and overcome them while ensuring that every child, every day, their needs are met, and that each will have an opportunity to grow in our school system and have a successful future, both academically, socially, and emotionally. I assure you that all of our actions will be rooted behind the premise that every student matters and every moment counts. I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to support and I look forward to working with you board and you superintendent. Thank you very much. And my wife, please. I'm sorry. Thank you. Madam Secretary, for the record, that, that vote was seven yay, one abstention. Okay, we'll take a second one minute break here. I'm like the question. Okay, we'll resume the business portion of tonight's meeting. Item 4.03, personnel items. This agenda item reviewed at the Personnel and Policy Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 18, 2019, and is aligned with goal B of the board's strategic plan. Mr. President, I move that we accept the uh, personnel items as presented to the board at the committee meeting on Monday. Second. Got a motion by Ms. Savoy, second by Mr. Smith. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, please cast your vote.
Madam Secretary, 4.03 passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is 4.04, .04, Renewal Property Insurance. In accordance with the process adopted by the school board on December 5th, 2012, the Director of Risk Management Benefits worked with an insurance broker, BRK Insurance Group, to solicit property insurance quotes from various insurance companies. The property insurance included name, windstorm coverage, and deductibles. The Director of, Mismanage of Risk Management and Benefits examined the proposal and presented it to the Board Risk Management Committee. With the, recommend, with the recommended insurance plan, the district will experience approximately a 16.7% increase in the premium. This is an increase of $282,154. This agenda item was reviewed at the Risk Management and Insurance Committee meeting of the Board on Monday, March 18th, 2019, is aligned with Goal B of the Board's strategic plan. Mr. President, I move approval of the Board's property insurance at a cost of $1,971,884 dollars and one cent. Second. Had a motion from Mr. Robichaux, second by Mr. Oquint. Mr. Robichaux, will you um, either either explain or, or have our insurance committee come up and talk about the 16.7 percent increase? Um, yeah, Mr. Kane. Mr. Kane. That's, it's, it's not a, yeah, it, it's a little misleading and, and I'd like Mr. Kane to explain that. Good evening. Good evening, Good board, evening. superintendent. The estimated annual increase this year is 16.9%. However, a lot of that is attributed to the increase in total value of our insured values because of the LaFon Performing Arts Center. So the actual rate increase for the pure rate compared to last year is only 6.9 percent. The rest of this is because we had a, we increased our buildings. We, we have more values to insure. So that's the, the the majority of this increase is because we added a big building. Okay. Yeah, I just I just wanted to um, uh, clarify that to to the public that you know insurance didn't increase by a pure rate of 16.7 percent. Correct. Thank you. Well, okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Madam Secretary, four, item 4.04 .04 passes unanimously. Item 4.05, change order number one, Dr. Rodney R. LaFont Performing Arts Center. The contract modifications included in change order number one are as follows. Emergency exit lighting per RFI number 40, orchestra pit lighting, fire alarm modifications, catwalk modifications for lighting brackets, safety chains at grid iron platform, northwest and south stairwell lighting at a cost of $62,812.91. Number two is labor material to install seismic clip, clips on CMU exterior walls of building part C at a cost of $24,936.85. Item number three, black box tension grid, follow spot, and ductwork modifications at a cost of $32,167.71. Number four is structural steel support curtain wall, header, canopy, modifications, wind grids, exterior sheeting, PVC vent waste pipe change to cast iron at a cost of $70,884.04. Number five is stairwell modifications, kiln room heat exhaust system, revised balcony rough-in modifications. Cost of $41,115.45. Number six is electrical for TV outlets, TV wall outlets. Cost of $6,559.84. Number seven is door hardware and access control, sound door frame. Cost of $9,942.19. Number eight is cassette HVAC modifications. Cost of $9,864.32. Getting better. Okay. Number nine is landscape modifications for a credit of $8,100. And number 10 is relocation of infrastructure for a credit of 
Okay, the total credit for all changes is $199,816.69. 89 contract days were added to contract as a result of construction change directives and weather. Approval of this change order will allow the district to make necessary modifications to the existing contract. This item was reviewed at the Capital Improvements Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 18, 2019, and is aligned with Goal D of the board's strategic plan. I'll entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. Got a motion from Mr. Robichaud, second by Mr. O'Quinn. Any discussion on this item? Can uh, can I have Mr. Rome come up? I I'd, uh, I don't know if it'd be better on this item or the next one. I don't I don't guess it really matters. But I'd like to know where we fell budget wise. Um, how do we end the day? Good evening. Good evening. I'm happy to report after even all those changes that you just mentioned that we did finish well under budget. Um, overall, for the Performing Arts Center Phase 1, 2, and 3, with architecture, engineering, and tech and furnishings, the budget was $35 million. That's what we proposed to the public during the bond issue process. Uh, we came in uh, slightly over $1 million under budget. So. Um, what you saw tonight was the balance of the credit in which we received roughly about $200,000 back. But uh, through the board's thoughtful process and the architect and engineer, the way the process was designed to uh, break the project up into three phases uh, really uh, let us plan the building out, which was pertinent in the sense that we were able to come up with plans that, that allowed us to uh, really think deeply about how the building was to be structured, what was to go into it, refer uh, to fire marshal plans and drawings, and to, um, and to be able to save the money there. Also, the three phases save money in the sense that we save the overhead that would have been associated with the first two phases of earthwork and cement work by not paying the contractor the extra 15% in phase three. So all those things combined really um, save the district and the citizens of St. Charles Parish money. Thank you, Mr. Rome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rome. Any other discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Madam Secretary, item 4.05 passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is 4.06, substantial completion. Dr. Rodney Orlefond Performing Arts Center. The Dr. Rodney Orlefond Performing Arts Center is ready to be accepted as substantially complete. The final inspection was held on Monday, March 18, 2019, with punch list items remaining. The architect recommends acceptance. Acceptance of the substantial completion of the, Rod of the Dr. Rodney Orlefond Performing Arts Center will allow the owner to utilize all spaces. This item is reviewed at the Capital Improvements Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 18, 2019, and is aligned with Goal D of the Board's Strategic Plan. Move acceptance of the substantial completion of the Rodney R. LaFond Performing Arts Center. Second. Motion by Mr. Bernard, second by Mr. Savoy. Any discussion? Mr. President, I would just like to say I'm sure John Rome feels like he has birthed a child. <laughs> <laughs> um, but how exciting. Um, that we have finally come to this point with the Dr. Rodney R. LaFond Performing Arts Center. Um, it certainly is a facility that will elevate arts education and performances in our school system and in our community. And I'd like to thank Murray Architects, and I see that uh, both Michael Tabb and Joey Murray are here tonight. Thank you, gentlemen, for the hard work that uh, you did um, for this facility. And also, I'd like to thank Lamar Contractors. I don't know that anyone is in here from Lamar Contractors, but one of the benefits that we experienced as a school system in working with local architects and local contractors is the give and take that had to happen throughout this particular project and I think that the result is just magnificent. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent. Any other discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Madam Secretary, that item passes unanimously. 
next item on the agenda is 4.07, Summer Food Service Program. The Summer Food Service Program is a child nutrition program funded by the United States Department of Agriculture. Its primary purpose is to provide nutritious meals to needy children 18 years of age and younger during the months when school are not in session. School communities qualify if 50% or more of the students are approved for free or reduced meals. Once the required percentage of eligible children is documented, any child may eat at no charge regardless of economic status. The sponsoring agency resumes financial and administrative responsibilities and is also responsible for operating the program within federal and state guidelines. St. Charles Parish Council, through its Department of Community Services, has accepted the responsibility in St. Charles Parish. Plans are being made to use the kitchen facilities at Carver Early Learning Center, Luling Elementary School, and St. Rose Elementary School. The program will operate for a period of June 3, 2019 through July 11, 2019. This item was reviewed at the Capital Improvements Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 18, 2019, as aligned with Goal D of the board's strategic plan. What's the board's pleasure? Mr. President, I move that we approve the use of three cafeteria facilities for the Summer Food Service Program. Got a motion by Mr. Suffern. Do I have, a, I have a second by Mrs. Bernard? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Madam Secretary, item 4.07, food service program passes. The next item on the agenda is accounts payable for the month of February 2019. Invoices and other financial obligations of the school district are customarily paid weekly. Request for approval of these transactions is normally made to the board monthly. The board must approve expenditures of public funds under its jurisdiction. This agenda item reviewed at the Finance and Audit Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 18, 2019, and is aligned with Gold C of the Board Strategic Action Plan. Mr. President, I move that we approve the accounts payable for the month of February 2019 in the total amount of $9,729,433.06. I'll second. Got a motion by Mr. Suffren, second by Mr. Oquin. Any discussion? Mr. President, I'd just like to note that uh, most of that outlay uh, was in the way of our uh, debt semi-annual debt service payments. Uh, which totaled uh, $7,466,309.30. Thank you, Mr. Suffern. Any other discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Madam Secretary, that item passes. Hey, that concludes the business portion of tonight's meeting. We're moving to the closing section. Um, at this time, any uh, committee chair or chair of any committee uh, would like to give their report at this time? Mr. President, the uh, Finance and Audit Committee met on Monday, March 18th, and we covered two items. Uh, one of the two items came to the full, full board during this meeting and was approved. That item was the accounts payable for the month of February 2019. The other item was, our, uh, was Chief Financial Officer Donna Post presented background, a summary of events, and an update on the formation of the Dr. Rodney Arla Fund Performing Arts Center Endowment Fund. And at this time, even though it's not committee business, I'd like to just uh, ask for a personal privilege to recognize one of our former board members who's in attendance this evening, Mr. Wayne Roussel, who served for 20 years on this board from 1986 till 2006. Mr. President, oh, Mr. Mr. President, the uh, Insurance and Risk Management Committee also met on Monday. We had our, le our monthly legal update given to us by our, our risk manager. We also had a, a pretty nice discussion on a property insurance, and uh, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Rocho. Mr. Mr. President, Mr. Pre go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Mr. President, I just want to make mention that uh, the Legislative Committee did not meet. However, I would like to point out that the uh, Regional Superintendents Association um, met here in St. Charles Parish uh, on last Monday, and um, 
during that meeting, um, there were representatives from various parishes here, including superintendents, senators, representatives, and so forth. There was a very lively discussion among those individuals regarding uh, legislation that will be proposed during the current the coming legislative session, as well as legislation that is already in place, and uh, the need for us to band together, to come together, to uh, encourage our legislative delegation to either support or to not support some of those pieces of legislation and to offer changes in some of the existing uh, laws that affect public education. Uh, there are many dollars that are going out the door uh, as it relates to funding for public education. Uh, example, uh, charter schools uh, receive an equal amount of money uh, in the minimum foundation that public schools receive. However, they are not required to provide the services example special education services and other services that must be provided by the public school system we believe that school districts suffer as a result of that because those dollars that are being given to other uh, entities to provide the services should come back to the uh, pot to be redistributed to public schools that are required to provide those services. So I want to thank our superintendent, uh, Felicia Gomez Walker, for uh, having and hosting the meeting of uh, the regional superintendents here. It was a very lively and informative meeting, and uh, hopefully we will continue to work closely with that organization and the Louisiana School Boards Association as we move forward. Thank, thank you, Mr. Smith, and I, I appreciate you bringing that to the public's attention. Uh, the importance of us working together with our senators and legislators up in Baton Rouge to um, to make sure that we're we're getting our fair share of, of the dollars that they continue to cut. So I appreciate that, uh, Mr. President. The Policy and Personnel Committee met uh, Monday, uh, March the 18th, and personnel items were, were discharged by the board tonight. Thank you, Mr. Savoy. Uh, Capital Improvements Committee met. We had reviewed several items. One was an update on the Dr. Rodney or Lafon Performing Arts Center. Um, we celebrated a little bit when we found out that the seats were in and complete, and, and it, now we can go on business as usual in the Shell uh, Theater. Another item we uh, talked about was the uh, change order number one, substantial completion. Both those items were brought to the board table tonight and approved. Uh, we also talked about uh, and approved the summer uh, food service program tonight. So. Uh, very beneficial program for the students that, um, that that aren't fortunate enough to, you know, have a hot meal every day. So uh, we appreciate the, the uh, parish government taking that on. So, and that concludes my report. Any other reports? Yeah, hearing none, uh, turn it over to the superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Nakan. First of all, I would like to thank the board for executing a national search for our superintendent and also um, going through a very uh, deliberate and intentional process in selecting the best person for the job to provide leadership in this school system to move the school system forward. The process was done with great professionalism and um, I think that the public um, has great confidence in the selection that was made tonight. I'd also like to take the opportunity to congratulate Dr. Ortling. Dr. Ortling and I have known each other for about 18 years before there was a Mrs. Ortling. Um, and I will say that from the very beginning, he certainly showed great leadership and um, I know that this school system is in great hands. Um, until I fulfill my contract 
which is at the end of June, Dr. Ortling and I will um, transition together so that this community and this school system experiences a seamless transition. So congratulations, Mr. Ortling. The St. Charles Parish Schools Business Department has received the highest form of recognition in governmental and financial reporting by the Government Finance Officers Association. Congratulations to our CFO, Donna Post, and her staff for this recognition of achievement. Congratulations. Each spring, the Louisiana Department of Education administers tests in grades three through eight to measure how well students have learned the Louisiana standards in English language arts, math, science, and social studies. Students in grades three through four will once again take paper and pencil assessments during the week of April 29th. Students in grades five through eight will take computer-based assessments during the testing window of April 1st through May 3rd, almost a month. Each school will provide specific dates for testing. We ask parents to speak to their children about the importance of doing their best on these tests as the results will be used in planning instruction. The scores will also be used to calculate district and school performance scores. High school students will take end of course and LEAP 2025 assessments during the testing window of April 15th through May 16th. These assessments measure student learning in certain high school courses, are counted as part of the student's course grades, and are used in computing school and district performance scores. Students who pass their courses but fail the end of course tests or LEAP 2025 assessments will have an opportunity to attend remediation and to retest in the summer. For more information, please contact your child schools. And finally, schools will be closed beginning Monday, April 15th through Monday, April 22nd in observance of Easter holidays. Classes will resume Tuesday, April 23rd, 2019. Central office will be open Monday, April 15th through Wednesday, April 17th, and close from April 18th through April 22nd. Wish everyone a blessed Easter. And Mr. President, that concludes my report. Thank you, Superintendent. Move adjourn. Got a motion by Mr. Robichaud. Second by Mr. O'Quinn. All those in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned.